Super Super Sport wet paint. Big feet. I pull up and kill shit. Six feet. All right, six feet going deep. It's notorious on my co-host Jay Vega, bro. With Gianni. All right, Gianni. Um, do you have another name? Yeah, I got uh PJ Cutler. Uh, Cutler is my production. PJ rapping. Why? Why was your name Cutler? Cause Cutler, I remember it's Cutler like, Beats, right? <laughs> yeah. Um. Um, originally, you know what I'm saying, I, I was born in Pennsylvania, and I had moved down to Miami in 2007. You're not, you're not Hispanic? I'm Hispanic. My parents, both of my parents are Hispanic. Well, my mother is Cuban, <clears throat> and my dad is Nicaraguan. Oh, okay. But um, I was born up there, and I came down here when I was about seven. And yeah, um, I lived in Cutler Bay. Wait, is well, I thought it was Cutler Bay. Is and then Pennsylvania I found was... a part of the DMV area? Is that no, that's uh, not, not part of it? Yeah. It's up north, but it's not. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if there's too many rappers associated. I'm like so knowledgeable about that whole like, <laughs> part of. Okay. Yeah, I had no idea about the whole DMV thing until today. So I've seen that anyway, so. Well, yeah. So you're saying that you moved to Color Bay? Yeah, and then I found out it wasn't even Color Bay. Right. You know, South Miami Heights. So I was like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I had already made a name off of, you know what I'm saying, Color. So Isn't I it weird, like, when you tell, like, when people are like, oh, where do you live? You're like, Color Bay. And they're like, yeah. you don't really live there? Yeah, because it's, it's like, not even exactly, you know what I'm saying? And, and I don't even think Color Bay is a thing anymore. I think they changed to the Old Cutler. So even if you say Color Bay now, it's not even. Isn't Old Cutler, like, the rich area of Color Bay? I'm not sure. I don't know. I, 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 I haven't really. <laughs> drove too much through those areas. I'm usually South Miami Heights, Homestead, Ghouls area. I used to go through there to get to Coconut Grove. It's Coconut really a nice Grove. drive. I haven't even, in Coconut Grove, I've been there a couple times, but it's not something too. So you're into music, right? What do you do? Uh, I actually uh, produce for a couple of people. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. I rap more recently. I've been rapping since I was very young. Who have you, um, who have you produced for? Uh, as of right now, I produce for Currency, Tony with Skits, um, Max Jr., Mr. Bangshot. Mm -hmm. Uh, mostly a lot of Los Angeles comedians and entertainers and things like that, but I, you know what I'm saying? I have a couple rappers on my belt as well, so it's nice to, you know, have a mix of things and be able to kind of dip into different, nah. you know what I'm saying, different different entertainment businesses. How were you able to link, link up with all of them? Like, what's, like what's your networking secret? Um, well, honestly, I, it was my, um, my sister was cool with uh, Tony Skits at first, and this was about three, four years ago, mm -hmm. and I had, um, he posted a video with her at the time, and I had commented, I was like, yo, throw me on some shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, and he actually commented back and he's like, yo, send me your info. So I told him and then from there I was his producer for about a year or so. We made a couple of videos, a couple of videos. I didn't, know, videos he was, I didn't like know that he was a rapper. Yeah, me either. He's, <laughs> lately he's been on, you know what I'm saying? He's been trying to rap and stuff like that. And he set me up like, yo, let's go do something in the studio and stuff like that. So yeah. it's cool to see him. I did his, uh, what was it, that challenge I was going around. The ALS water bucket challenge? No, no, no. It was the it was a rap challenge, but I forgot. It wasn't the Oh the, the Who Run It challenge? No, 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 not Who Run It. Was and it, it wasn't the fuck. What was the one that he did? I don't know, I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember. It was the damn, I can't remember. It's an old old record that, that people were starting to freestyle over again. But it wasn't Who Run It. But I recorded that for him. I didn't know what you're talking about, but I just remember the name of the song. Yeah. It I wasn't it wasn't song? Damn. So the what? Is it that sad yeah, song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't remember that shit. I don't remember what it's called, but um, down for I saw so many people doing it. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely that. something that was popping at the time. <laughs> and he did it. He yeah, did he did it. He, he, he's not, bro. Honestly, like as, as somebody that. who's an entertainer, and you sit there and you look at them make funny videos, and mm -hmm. you hear them rap on a microphone, and you really, you know what I'm saying? And you you hear something you don't expect, you look at them twice. But uh. it was cool to be a part of that experience. You know? Have you ever thought of doing like? Comedian videos, like yeah, of course, videos. of course. I made a couple of videos, but I never, you know what I'm saying. And I always found myself as somebody funny, especially in school. You know what I'm saying. I always, you know, like value myself as a class clown. You know, I always had fun at school. I always passed my classes because I was funny with my teachers and shit like right. that. I never, you know what I'm saying, like. So it, it got me far being funny and stuff like that, and I created a lot of relationships off of that. Usually, it's but the as opposite. far as yeah, you know what I'm saying. Usually, yeah, the teachers don't want to deal with that kid, or, you know what I'm saying. But I was actually able to, you know what I'm saying. You know, create friendships and relationships with you know, say my classmates as well as teachers, and I was actually able to get a lot done through that without doing as much work. <laughs> yeah. So where you were like, yeah. where you in classes like taking your pencils and making yeah, 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 bro. Seventh, eighth grade, I loved doing <laughs> that shit. But as far as like high school, I was a lot of rap battles, and mm. uh, you know what I'm saying. I, I hold my clock to this day. I've never lost a rap battle in school. So, you know what I'm saying. Come catch me on the bars right quick. We throw on the beat, get something going. Remember, remember what we talked about before we got here. What. About the six feet of death. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. If you wanna, <laughs> you wanna throw something all right quick, you can do it. We got like a quick cipher after. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what actually got you into making music? Uh, I was about, I say, well, I mean, ever since I was young, my dad was very, very into hip hop and things like that. He would play Trick Daddy and 
and Paul Wall and things like that. You know, the, the artists that were popping back in the days, Outkast, and you know what I'm saying, a lot of those yeah. names. So I always had it, you know what I'm saying, in my in my catalog for music. And my brother at the time was, you know what I'm saying, he started to listen to Tupac and things like that. He wanted to, you know what I'm saying, get dig deeper into the older music. Mm. So I just found a lot of interest into it, and, and it was all I listened to. I didn't really listen to anything else. So, you know what I'm saying, maybe like 2000. Eight two thousand nine, Dove Step came out and that was cool for a little while. That's when you were, you know what I'm saying. Like a, you were a raver. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, I had um, I, I was I, I loved dancing when I was younger, especially you know what I'm saying. But I, I I always stuck to music, you know what I'm saying. Whether it was dancing or it was rapping or making beats, my um, my cousin had started produce not producing, but he was on the virtual DJ uh -huh. and he wanted to be a DJ. And I was like, yo, you know what I'm saying. I looked up my, to my cousin and I wanted to do something similar, but I didn't want to say he was, you know, I was biting or anything at the, at the time either. Yeah. So I kind of found my own lane and I, I started up. Where were you guys using trash at that time? Trash at first, bro. What, <laughs> it was uh, a what, what the program? program? Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, oh. F of the demo. Oh. And then you know, Torrance and shit. So <laughs> I was chilling. But um, I can say now I'm very fluent with the program. You know what I'm I saying? Started, I can get into the studio. I started anybody. seeing like <clears throat> Image Line was going on like YouTube and stuff and like taking down a bunch of producers' videos because they, like, they had like um, they had like the bootleg. The torrented um. Oh FL studio. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's wild. I didn't even know about that. I was yeah, living because I seen a lot of producers that like like be making tutorials with people that I watch. They're like, oh, I gotta take down this video. I gotta take down all these videos because of image line and stuff. I had no idea. Yeah, they're probably getting. They're probably monetizing their videos and stuff like that. Yeah, and, yeah. Making money off something they image line didn't want them to make money off of. Do you feel like? Do you feel like making beats was gonna be like your full career? you may have a whole like a whole life based around it mm, I, i've always had many different things i wanted to accomplish like when i was younger i wanted to write a book uh -huh. you know what i'm saying certain things like that or i wanted to make a cartoon you know now that i'm older i, I see that 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 affects kids a lot so if i could be an influence to younger people or maybe an actor you know what i'm saying but my main main thing was always you know music whether it was rapping or you know when i was younger i wanted to be a dj or a uh -huh. producer you know what i'm saying things like that and i still stay to this lane and i I made a lot of connections off of it, so I plan to reap the benefits of my hard work. How do you feel about like people saying the younger generation they're not they don't know about like Tupac and like Biggie and all the older rappers? It's it's all how you're raised, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people are you know they have a lot of siblings and things like that and mm -hmm. they go to school and then they're, they're not too influenced around the older people in their family. I would say since a young age I had no option, you know what I'm saying? Because it, it was mainly older people in my family. Mm -hmm. And I had two siblings, you know what I'm saying? Like four siblings, my brother and my sister. And they found interest in the music as well. So it's all about who you are and, and what you prefer as music. You know what I'm saying? That what to listen to and things like that. But mm -hmm. I feel like it's just all about who you're around. If if you're around that type of music and you're around people that speak about that type of music, you're bound to know something about it or fall. You know what I'm saying? Have some sort of interest for it. And as yeah. far as the new generation that doesn't, you know, it's them and they have their own music. I appreciate the new music as well. But you know, it's just who you surround yourself with and what you find appealing to you. Yeah, of course. What about the the scene out here in Florida or in Miami? How do you feel about mm, that? What's it like to you? It's it's interesting. You might make a very good connection. You might make some. You know what I'm saying? A, a one time thing. If people are very bipolar in Miami, and not literally bipolar, but you know what I'm saying. A lot of people have a lot of things going on, so it's kind of hard to network out here. I can say the past four years that I've really been networking and, and mm -hmm. making do with what I have as far as music goes. It's uh, it, it's hard, but it. it it's it's beneficial when you really put the work in, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people out here really do make it, you know what I'm saying? And, they, and mm -hmm. they really do have a lot of things going for them. So if you really just, you know, make do with what you have and, and create the connections and, and get on Instagram and Twitter and, and whatever social media and you actually try to reach out and make these connections, you can make something happen. How but I wouldn't say it's the most, you know what I'm saying, beneficial area to be in as far as music is concerned. How do you feel like the best way to promote yourself is like to actually get your music out there? Mm, I would say personally, you know what I'm saying. I could sit here and send a link to a hundred different people, mm. but it's not gonna be this. It's not gonna be the same if I sit there and speak to a hundred different people. But like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Come check out my music. It's a lot different of a connection, you know. It's a vibe, you know, affiliated with that. Mm. You could send anybody a link, and they're just gonna pass it because they see ten of them shits a day. Yeah. But you actually speak to somebody, and you resonate with someone. <clears> they're bound to, you know, click on that link or or see what you have to say if, if they're interested in, in, in how you approach them. So. What other mistakes do you see rappers doing, or like any artists trying to get their names out? Mm, make you know like start a beef with the wrong people yeah. you know what I'm saying and, and the other fan base is larger and it just crushes their career the first two fucking seconds either that or or people just really hold themselves too high and they create a very like arrogant you know what I'm saying image for themselves and a lot of people don't want to work with that person yeah. or they, you know what I'm saying they don't want to affiliate themselves with that person because they feel like it, it might not be the right environment in the studio or 
you know, but I feel like it's all about how you hold yourself and, and you know what I'm saying, and, and the opportunities you take and how you treat other people and you can get for. Yeah. What about placements for producers? How do you feel that the importance, like what do you place the importance on placements? Do you feel like it's better to just have regular people just rapping on your beats or a big celebrity? It's funny, I mean, I, it, it's, it's mixed emotions on that because I've seen more money locally as far as beats go mm -hmm. and I've gotten more exposure, you know what I'm saying, as far as Los Angeles and people like that and the entertainers on the, on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. So working with larger people, I see more exposure, but working with local people, I see more money. So it's all really about the direction you want to go and, you know, the respect, the type of respect you want to have and, and things like that, you know, you just kind of have to play the chess game and see. Yeah. Have you ever um, made a beat for someone and then, like, you didn't think it was going to go anywhere, but then it... Their, their, numbers, their numbers started climbing? Yeah, I uh, actually had somebody that was like salty, but I, I sent a beat uh, to Mike Smith, right. and he didn't want to use the beat. He's like, all right, whatever, it's chilling. But he never, you know what I'm saying? He never reached out too much about the situation. I talked to him back and forth a couple a couple times. Mm. And I ended up sending it to um, my homeboy Matthew in LA, and he made a video, and I got a couple hundred thousand plays. And that felt right. good, you know what I'm saying? Right. But I'm not gonna sit here and shit, I'm like, ah, fuck Mike Smith, you know what I'm saying? But it <laughs> no, felt good like, to know like somebody that didn't value my work, if somebody else found it valuable, and I was able to do something. And even then, I'll still work with Mike Smith, you know, I just gotta reach his vibe a little bit. I'm not hating, you know, he didn't want to use it, that's him. Right. But you know what I'm saying? I just gotta, you know, How do you feel? Do you ever like send out a whole bunch of beat packs and then they don't use any of them? It, 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 with certain artists, I will send a beat pack, you know what I'm saying? And, and they will actually sit there and make songs with it. Mm. A lot of times they just, you know what I'm saying? But oh, I don't, you know, I want something more like this, or I want something more like that. And a lot of people really ask for specific things. And even with production, I see myself as an artist, which, mm. you know what I'm saying? It's specific, you know, I have a specific style. And a lot of people want me to step outside of my comfort zone and it's, you know, uncomfortable. <laughs> like, it, it, it it kind of puts you in a position, you know, especially when it's somebody bigger, you want to create this opportunity, but you don't know how, how to go about it because it's not your style or it's not how you want to approach things. So, mm. you know, it, it's just, I don't know. What do you feel about, um, like, artists stealing beats? Stealing beats? Yeah. Or like Fuck this, it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you're not making money off it and you're getting my name popping, then that's cool. Uh, if you're stealing my beat and you're making money off it, Fuck it, it happens. You know what I'm saying? I, I got a million other hot beats, you know, stuff I can send to other people. Mm. So I'm never really worried about missing one opportunity. But if it's somewhere, if it's a situation where I feel disrespected, you know what I'm saying? I, I might steer, steer away from certain situations or from a certain artist. But I'm not really going to, you know, start no pressure or no, nothing. Like, I don't know. People that steal beats, I feel like if you're really a, a professional rapper, you're serious about your craft and you respect others, you know what I'm saying? As, as mm. an artist or as a producer, you should put that money forward for you. You should put at least the connection, be like, hey, can I use this? A lot of people don't have the respect to do that, so that's them, that's the name they create for themselves in the game. Mm. If they want that, you know what I'm saying, or they want to have that reputation, then that's them. But. What about, um, aside from like making beats, what other parts of like does production play? Like, Do you feel yourself trying to grow out um, to do other stuff? That yeah. require like scoring movies or like yeah, yeah, other yeah. stuff like of that. Course, of course, of course. If I could ever have a soundtrack, or you know, a lot like for example, um, Fast and Furious Seven, I believe they had a lot of rappers and a lot of things like that, and that's you know hip hop music. You know they they use the hip hop beats for the soundtrack and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So that'd be a great <laughs> opportunity. But even then, even if it was something more instrumental, you know what I'm saying, that I could get into for uh, Transformers or something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. And even if it's not the money, I would love to be a part of something like that and to actually you know have have a, a name behind something like that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, you know, for example, Adult Swim, they have little beats that they play in the commercials and stuff. Yeah. I would like to, you know what I'm saying, have something sent over to them and then, you know, be watching <laughs> Adult Swim one day and hear my shit come on. But, uh, yeah. I feel like it's, it's a couple things. Really metal. Yeah, it's you know, like they, they like those beat. very, like, uh, acid type beats and shit. Yeah. They're pretty cool. I like They have, them. like, they rappers on there, too. They have, like, a bunch of underground rappers that they. they have, yeah, recently, they, they have, like, um like an album or a mixtape or something that like came out like every week right yeah like every week like trying to put on artists yeah like an application they made I think where yeah. they just upload a whole bunch of new artists that want to put on but oh, they're, you know dope. what I'm saying they're sending opportunities the dose swing hit me up <laughs> <laughs> we made something happen how would you like what how would you describe your type of beats like what would you make you make like that mm. hard Florida bass you make this, like soft Mel I would I would say I stay away not that I stay away from trap because I can sit here and, and it's really about my mood that day you know what I'm saying I'm listening to Cheek Keep the whole day I'm like I have no yeah, choice but to get on the computer you know what I'm saying and, and, and transfer that energy from what I was listening to earlier or however I'm in that you know whatever mood I'm in I'm gonna translate it but mm -hmm. most of the time you know what I'm saying I light some shit up be chilling and make something vibing something you know smooth something people to soothe into the ear something you can sit back some currency type shit or something yeah. you know you, you, you want to relax and you want to listen to something that's that, you get, that, you get you smoke before you make those kind of beats 
it, I, I'm high all, all the time. <laughs> and, then, and it's not something I'm, I'm proud about or I take pride in, but it, it, you know what I'm saying? And I, if anything, it slowed my music down, which, you know what I'm saying? It, it, something I like to speak about too, which a lot of people, they, they kind of put weed in such a high place in the music culture, and, and I really feel like it slows a lot of us down. But, mm. you know, as far as personally, I, I feel like it gives me a different take on, on how I make my music or a different take as far as, you know what I'm saying, what, what I'm going to create that day. Or it might, you know, calm me down, and I might have been mad 10 minutes ago, and that just changes the whole vibe of the song right there. So, mm. it's, you know what I'm saying? It, it affects it negatively and positively, depending on the day. But I feel like I've created a lot more opportunity sober than I have I. But it doesn't like change like your the mindset or like the creativity that it, comes out. I mean, it, it 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 doesn't change anything as far as how I think, but it does change the motivation. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And as, as far as how hard I'm willing to work for where I need to go, I, I I cut down a lot on that. So I feel like I you know what I'm saying? Personally, I would need to take a break. Some people make do with it. You know what I'm saying? Wiz Khalifa made it, but like, you know what I'm saying? People don't see that. You know, he, he didn't have money either. He didn't have money to buy a ten sack and go make his music. So a lot of, you know, when he was creating his opportunities, he wasn't smoking like how he was smoking when he was actually making it. A lot of people see these rappers smoking, but like, ah, he made it smoking, so I'm going to make it smoking. Like, yeah. not everybody does it, bro, so. No, yeah. Um, what are some producers that you look up to? Producers I look up to? Or that influence um, you? I would say Pharrell Williams. Mm. Uh, this is the bro number. Uh, Tyler, the creator. He's uh, very, very, uh, I value him very much in his production side of things besides his artistry. Uh, Timberland, a lot of the old schools, you know, as far as the new school producers, I see uh, Sunny Digital, um, you know, a lot of the, the, the known ones, you know, like Metro Booming and stuff like that, but I, I really do appreciate the older, you know, around 2002 to 2007, 2008 production, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, where you hear these certain instruments or certain sounds that, that aren't incorporated today, or they may be incorporated today, but it's not as complex as, you know, the producers would put the work in. So do you feel like when it comes to VS VSTs and stuff, you like... You find those packs, like the sounds that you like, or you use like the Nexus and stuff. Like I've been, yeah, ones. I've been lazy lately, to be honest. I got in a couple packs as far as the VSTs and stuff like that to make my sounds a little bit more diverse. Mm. But I, I've been getting lazy lately. You know what I'm saying? I've been comfortable with my sounds and stuff. So I just, I don't know. I get on there and I, I, I make with what I have and, and try to, you know, do everything from what I have so far. But I definitely need to go spend some time and download some stuff for myself. Man. What, where's your motivation to make a beat come from? I say life. You know what I'm saying? Going through something. I, I, if I'm not inspired or if I'm not going through anything or if I had like, you know what I'm saying? A very neutral week, I can't sit there and create. I don't feel like, I don't know, it just doesn't come up. For, me. Mm. For example, if I'm, I don't got nowhere to sleep, you know, like a, a recent situation happened in my life and I, I can't go back to my mom's house, I can't do certain things. That is a motivation. I could sit on my phone and I could write something about that. Or I could sit on the computer and I could translate it. But if there's, you know, there's no, if it's just a neutral vibe, I can't really create anything. Yeah. So I'll just say life in general. You know what I'm saying? Whatever I'm going through at that time, I could translate that in music. And, and yeah, that's mainly how I do it. But nah, of course. What about um, like any advice that you want to give to anyone starting out right now? I say just be yourself. I say being myself. I, I've created a lot of opportunities and a lot of, you know what I'm saying? A lot of things that I could I could hold pride in now and I could sit here and call my mom on the phone and be like, hey, look what I did and she'll be happy for me. Mm -hmm. So I, I would just say be yourself, man. A lot of people try to, to imitate or be so close to something else or they say, oh, Cardi, uh, Playboy Cardi made this song and this is popping, so I want to make something like Playboy Cardi. It's like, mm -hmm. nah, yo, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you really feel? Like, you, you yeah. know, so it, it just be yourself, bro. A lot, of, a lot of opportunities will arise from that. And if you're not being yourself, people in the industry are going to see through that and they're not going to want to work with you, so. Mm -hmm. Nah, of course. Yeah. So, uh, what about anyone you want to shout out? Shout out, um, shout out my mom. <laughs> shout out the people in the room with me. You know, Nick, you know, homie, we all, we all out here. You know, uh, YZ, ZY, 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 my phone on that. You know what I'm saying? We out here. But I, I really do appreciate everybody in my life right now. Um, not too many people supporting, and you know, that's personal. It's as far as me, you know, distance myself. But everybody who's been around, everybody who's been showing love lately. If you watch this, you know who you're talking about. You know, love. You started rapping too, right? We'll yeah. Listen into that real quick. What? Oh, um, you have anything coming out right now? Uh, I have a the nice for what joint uh, Drake drop. Uh, I had oh, a yeah. remix for that, and I was really liking how it came out. But that's pretty much the only thing I have that's that's new that I really want to release. As far as that's concerned, I have a lot of music that I would like to drop. I just you know a bit lazy, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. I'm working around it. Um, I showed up here today. You know what I'm saying. I'm making an effort to to further my 
my talent and to, to further my opportunities and actually create something. You know, if I'm not going to be putting my 100% in school or mm-hmm. work or making money, you know what I'm saying? Like, directly, I want to do something that's going to benefit me long term. So Yeah, of course. Uh, where can they find you at? Uh, SoundCloud, Instagram, Twitter. I don't really use Twitter much. It's all Cutler Beats. Um, or Youngin' with the PJs. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and I forgot to shout out my girlfriend earlier. Shout out to my girlfriend, my beautiful, my beautiful baby, my wifey. And uh, she helps me out financially, you know, everything, you know, helps me out with the, with the you know, motivation and things like that. But, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So this is the Six Feet. What? Gio, Gianni, PJ. Yeah. Catch PJs. me on the TV in like a couple months, you know. I'll be out here. For sure. <laughs>